All right, welcome back to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Here's our GMC tweet of the night. It's from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Tomorrow, air number 22 is back. Gets his physical press conference around 3.30 tomorrow. And he'll be reintroduced to Bucko Nation. Um, you know, Pony, I, we do have a tweet here. Uh, do you believe that Brian Reynolds is dealt before the season? Or do you think he stays put for the 2023s? And that's from Aaron McCloskey. I, I think he's going to be here because the Pirates want... And if he isn't here, they're going to get one heck of a deal. I can tell you that. They want the world for Brian Reynolds. Well, there was a report out of New York that they wanted a Juan Soto package. If they can get a Juan Soto package, uh, you make that trade because that would be a drastic overpay by the team that acquired him. Juan Soto is one of the young stars in baseball. And Brian Reynolds is a very good player. So I was thinking about this, Richie. If we're thinking about Pirates outfielders from yesteryear, right? So you've got McCutcheon, who's at the top. I'm saying like post bonds. You've got McCutcheon. Then I would say Brian Giles. Then I would say Jason Bay. And then I would say that Reynolds, Reynolds, Reynolds might even be below Marte. Richie, would you agree with that so far? Would you say that he's maybe yeah, that tier? Yeah, I, I, the Marte I Bay um, analogy is pretty Bay, good. I think Bay was a better player. Bay was a much better power hitter. Now, maybe Reynolds is a better outfielder and might hit for a higher average, uh, you know, better maybe line drive hitter. But I thought Bay was a better power hitter, could work walks and get on base. You know, I think Brian Reynolds ideally on a really good team I don't think he's hitting in the middle of the lineup. I think he's hitting maybe more like sixth for a great team. So is somebody going to give you like the entire solar system back in a package for him? No, if they do, you jump on it. But I don't think that they should just – look, I don't think they should be in a rush to trade him. If Neil Walker's hunch is right, then you, know, you might want Brian Reynolds on your team to take a run at a playoff spot next year. He's under contract next year. But, so, it, but if they're like 2011, not 2012, I mean, right. and you can get a boatload. Say you get, I mean, what, there were rumors that uh, potentially lighter from the Rangers that you could get him back somehow. Now you got a top end guy, right? Well, and, and the reason why a move like that uh, would perk my ears up is because part of the part of the problem for the Pirates is we can put this lineup together on paper for the next couple of years. And I think you look at it and say, hey, it's not bad. You know, if these guys, now they got to pan out. If these guys work out, maybe this is a makings of a good lineup. But where's the pitching going to come from? Where are the guys in the rotation who get you through a 162 game season? Mitch Keller had a decent second half of the season. I'm not going to exaggerate or embellish how good he was. It was a step in the right direction. And I was never, I, I didn't know if he was ever going to make a positive step. So you hope to build on that, Richie. Uh, is there, Rich Hills, 42, 43 years old. Uh, Ortiz came up late last year. Maybe he's the guy that factors into it. Do we see uh, Priester at some point this year? Maybe I would hope June. so. Burroughs, same yeah. thing. Do we see him? I would like to think so. So, but I still don't see a guys at the top of the rotation who remind me of Garrett Cole and A.J. Burnett and yeah. Francisco Liriano from those Pirates teams, Richie. I agree. I agree. Let's go out to Ed and Kennedy. How you doing, Ed? Uh, Josh Taylor got me fired up about Pirates starting pitching a couple of weeks ago. He said there's five young pitchers who are capable of starting in the majors. Now, say three of them pan out. Uh, what about Trevor Bauer? How much money does he want? Well, I mean, I, I don't know if anyone's going to touch Bauer right now, but, like, you're talking about five capable pitchers in the majors, but are they five capable starters? Are they high-end starters? And I think that's what the Pirates lack. Maybe Quinn Priester is that guy, but they need a uh, Garrett Cole-type number one starter or even an A.J. Burnett guy. Um, and I don't think that's on this roster right now. I don't even know if Mitch Keller – is potentially that guy. He might be a good three guy. If Mitch Keller's a good middle of the rotation starter for the next two or three years, I would take that right now. So would um, I. I because, a good three I, guy. I, because I thought that there was a chance 
earlier this year that he was going to go bust and he was going to be a guy that was moving on to a new team that was never going to pan out here or realize his potential. So, yeah, I would take that. I would settle for that right now. Are there guys in the minor leagues who are capable of being major league starting pitchers? Sure. But you don't win. You know, you don't really, that's not a recipe for making the playoffs where you just have guys that you, know, you hopefully can get you through five innings and then turn things over to your bullpen, you know, guys that are not dominant in any way. I need more dominant starting pitching. That's a hard thing to find, power pitchers. For the Pirates, they got to draft those guys or get lucky that they bring somebody in in free agency who's coming off a bad year or two. You know, they've had success with guys like Quintana and Anderson, and maybe Hill will be the latest example of that, Rich. He's more of a finesse pitcher, yeah. of course, with his age. But, you know, I think if he has a good first 10 or 15 starts, they'll be looking to trade him for prospects. Of course. They hit the lottery back in the day when they got – uh, Lariano and, um, you know, some of those guys and Burnett and those guys. And that's the reason they made the postseason those years. Some of the other guys are slipping my mind right now, but um, they weren't the only two. Let's Edison to- Volquez, Volquez was a good that's the guy. I was, that? That's the guy I was trying to think of his name. All right, let's go out and Matt and Butler. How you doing, Matt? Hey, guys. Good evening. Hey, hey I, I, like this, I like Andrew McCutcheon coming back. Uh, I think it's a good feel-good story. ESPN's predicting 98 and a half losses for the Pirates this year. That's the over-under mark. They, as you just said, they have no starting pitching. They have no relief pitching. If you need to bring McCutcheon back to straighten out the team who is, is sunflower seeds and cell phones, that's a bad, a very bad sign. Yeah, you Matt, I don't know if they're bringing McCutcheon in to straighten out the team. I mean, he's not really a rah-rah type of guy in the clubhouse. I mean, I've been in the clubhouse with him, so have you. Andrew, I mean, he's he's a but leader is by Crosby example. A no, no, guy? that's what I mean. Exactly. He's a leader by example. Um, I don't think they're bringing him in. They're bringing him in to help lead. You know, when he was young, they had those guys, and now he's one of those guys. I, I look, it's it's a good PR move, but it's a good move all around. I think for the Pirates. Uh, I mean, they yeah, need I mean, a lot of help. And look, I, I don't know what the over under is in Vegas. You probably do, but um, I think I don't think it's out yet. I don't. I think they're a tad. I think they're in the 91-92. That's where I would have their prediction last season. I don't think it's going to be 98. I think it's going to be well, around 90. And, 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 and that's still not good. No, it isn't. But, you know, if a lot of these young guys come up to the major leagues and look like they're productive players in the second half of the season, then it'll make it easier to uh, tolerate or satisfy uh, or to, 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 to put up with, to stomach. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I don't want this to be such a long, drawn-out process. I want them to win right now. Yeah. You know, I like – but that's just not the way that they're going to do things here. If they don't start to turn it around this year, then I think at that point, Richie, it'll be fair to question this regime that they bought brought in with Ben Charrington and Derek Shelton. All right, let's go out to Nick and Overbrook real quick. You got about a minute, Nick. What's up? Hey, how's it going, guys? Just looking hey, at man. the acquisitions the Pirates made, uh, Velasquez, Santana, uh, Connor Joe, Rich Hill, a lot of the guys you could just already talked about. I'm kind of looking at them as just trade pieces for the next couple of years, and then hopefully, you know, the uh, Henry Davises, the Priesters, like you talked about, maybe Nick Gonzalez pans out. Uh, you're still looking at maybe two to three years before they get developed. Yeah, I think two years. I, I think two. I, you know, 2025 was the, was how the feeling that we have. Isn't that kind of what Ben Charrington alluded to a couple years ago? Uh, me, well, I think things maybe got thrown off a little bit by COVID. That yeah. year was their first year at the helm. I don't know if they're not playing meaningful games in uh, in August and September of next year. I'm going to think that something went wrong with their plan. Uh, you know, I think that they were hoping that fans were open to a rebuild and would allow for them to strip it down to the studs and little by little build it back up. Uh, I think this is the last year for even very ardent diehard Pirates fans. I think this is the last year where they can tolerate, you know, anything close to a team that's way below 500, like 90 losses or worse. Yeah, I agree, Pony. We got to take a break. Back in a couple minutes.